These are the top LS swap mistakes that are costing you a ton of money. Number one is poor planning. This is what killed me on this swap. Um, as you can see, it doesn't even look like it's complete. That's because I'm ripping back into everything. Um, I had this car completely running, operational, look great, building boost, making power, all kinds of fun. And uh, I started painting the car. The shit show. No room for show, just shit. I did not like how everything was kind of thrown together. The harness was kind of laid up all over the place. Uh, my PCM didn't have a good mounting location. Uh, the exhaust sucked. I was, it, it was just terrible. So we'll start with number one. The worst thing you can do is not have your plan built out. You need to know before you even start, you need to know exactly what, what you're going to do, you know, what transmission you're going to run. You need to know all of that stuff. So this motor I got from a, uh, from a junkyard off Facebook. It was out of a 2004 Tahoe. Um, didn't know how many miles it had on it or anything like that. Uh, so when I showed up to the junkyard, this thing was, um, they had the harness all like just jacked up. You could tell that they ripped the thing out of the, out of that Tahoe in a few minutes. So, um, it was just a mess. I'd much rather go to the junkyard and pull it myself or get a donor vehicle. That's the best way to do it. Um, so I had this harness that had all kinds of damage done to it. All the, uh, I had, you know, sensors and stuff that were banged up from then thrown on the forklift. It was just a mess. Uh, transmission. I knew I didn't want to run the 4L60, so I wanted to do a turbo 400. Here's one of my first mistakes there. I, uh, found a great deal on a, uh, turbo 400 on Facebook. It was like 300 bucks. And um, was told it was rebuilt and everything was good with it. So I went and picked that up. And not knowing anything about this stuff, um, still learning as I go, um, I picked up a uh, BOP. And for you Pontiac guys to know what that is, it's a completely different bolt pattern from the LS. Now, they do have adapter plates. So I ran an adapter plate to make that BOP transmission work. Problem is that back that, that adapter plate pushed the... Tr the uh, it pushed the torque converter too far away, so I had to run these. Um, I had to run these spacers to get the torque converter um, to have the right depth. And what ended up happening is that torque converter was barely in the pump, so um, it fried that transmission so fast. This is where the uh, torque converter was in the in that pump housing, and it was slipping out. It slipped out, and it tore the pump apart. And basically made it to where the torque converter was no longer locking up with the pumps. I had no pressure. And basically the, the whole transmission fried. Fast forward a few months later, after blowing up that BOP transmission, I went and got a, uh, a regular Turbo 400 case. And I took all the good parts out of there. All it, it just fried the clutches. So I did a rebuild kit, learned how to rebuild the transmission myself. And finally got all that back together. And um, car was running great. All right, moving on to the next mistake, and that is making things harder than they have to be. So as I was painting the car and doing my body work, I was doing the uh, door adjustment, and I was having trouble getting to these bolts here for your um, your door hinges, and I had the door the doors were kind of sagging, so um, I kept fighting and fighting it, and finally I was like, screw it, I'm just gonna take these this these fenders off. So I went ahead and took the fenders off, which I was avoiding the whole time I was doing the LS swap. I didn't want to rip the fender, fenders off and have the front end off the car. I just wanted to toss the motor in there on a Saturday and be rolling on Sunday. And that is the biggest mistake because as I was doing my turbo kit, which you can see is being redone right now, because I had the fenders in, in the way, um, I couldn't really get in there and properly weld up the turbo kit. Um, I had some like you know flanges and stuff, and originally I had the um, I had the manifold coming up through here, and then I had this giant you know four inch exhaust right here, and I could not get the exhaust between the frame rail and the motor over here because there's no room, so I was stuck going on the outside of the frame. Which when I did that, I went straight down through here, um, which limited me on wheels and tires, which is going to be changed eventually. So I knew it was going to be a problem down the road, but for now I was like, ah, oh, it'll probably work. But what ended up happening is since I was going over here, I couldn't get that four inch exhaust high enough off the ground. I was driving down the road. It was scraping everywhere. Every time I hit a bump, I was sitting in sparks. 
um, super frustrating and um, not really good for like a, a daily kind of street car, just something you're toy around on the weekend. Every time you hit a bump, I don't want to be hitting the exhaust. So um, now that I had the fenders off, I was like, all right, now we can now we can go ahead and redo this turbo kit. So um, I was in the middle of redoing the turbo kit, ended up having some ankle surgery. So um, kind of took a pause on this and started doing some of the body work. Um, you might have seen some of my other videos. I was doing the uh, the fender over there. So, if you're gonna do the LS swap, go through the extra effort. Go ahead and take off your side fenders, take off the front bumper, especially if you're doing a turbo, then you'll be able to um, you know, do your intercooler piping. It won't all be in the way. Everything will be so much better because I just, I basically, I kind of learn as I go, I just, Threw this thing together so now everything's gonna be going together the right way it's gonna be so much cleaner so the next thing kind of in line with that uh, with that planning is know what you want to do from the get-go so um, start from the uh, beginning I was gonna do um, I wanted a nice intake I didn't want to have the ugly truck plastic intake so I went and bought this super cool, um, the Holly Sniper LS intake. It was beautiful, mounted up perfect, but I was being a cheap ass. So since I was being cheap, uh, I bought like decapped injectors because um, I knew you know the stock ones weren't going to work for the uh, for the turbo, and I could not get this thing to tune at all. It would uh, I, I would play with that HP tuners. You know, I've watched hundreds of videos. Um, no matter what I could do, the thing would not build boost. It, I was having all kinds of problems. Uh, I, I think it was those injectors. I couldn't, I could not get them to work. So I went another route, and I wish I would have done this from the get go. Honestly, one that's um, I can't tune. So, so after figuring out that I'm not a, the best tuner in the world, and I didn't want to spend a thousand dollars on injectors. And also the I uh, probably had I had that junk harness and that PCM that uh, was giving me issues too. I had it lock up on, on me once. I had to do the little pin trick to get it to unlock. Um, once I got all that figured out, so after playing with the uh, that Holly Sniper intake for a few months and fighting the harness and sensor problems and fighting the PCM, that thing locked up on me a few times. Where I had to do the uh, like it wouldn't read or write from HP tuners. I had to do the uh, little pin reset trick. So after doing that, I decided screw it. I'm just gonna throw a carburetor on there. I've always wanted to do a blow through carburetor. I think it's kind of cool. There's some other benefits to it. Um, so I got the uh, MSD ignition box and threw the this carburetor on there and. It was night and day, it was better almost instantly. I mean, the car woke up, it was building boost, running great, so love it. The, everything was set up perfectly, it just, the car, the engine bay was just not how it wanted it. It was just kinda, still kinda sloppy. I had the battery up here still, that was taking up space. Um, with the uh, turbo out, I had this fender well on this side was removed and the driver's side it was still on there so when you open the hood it just looked kind of funky you had you know you had a fender on well on one side not on the other um, I'm probably not gonna run them I may do a custom one later on once I get everything set up so now I'm gonna run the uh, the blow through setup and there's so many benefits to that um, number one as the air enters through here it's gonna pull you know it's gonna go right through the fuel so your charge temperatures plummet um, a lot of people don't even run intercoolers on, since I already bought one and had it, you know, everything set up for it. I'm going to go ahead and do that. I'm going to run the intercooler. Um, right now it's on pump gas. I may go ahead and convert this over to E85, which isn't too hard. There's a ton of videos out there. Once I understand it better and feel comfortable, I may make a, a video on that on my own. So that is my top LS mistakes. Um, you guys drop a comment down below. Let me know some of the goofy stuff you guys did. Uh, it was a fun process and learning, so... Um, hopefully this video gets to you guys and maybe you can avoid some of these mistakes I've made and save a ton of money.